Was the office broken into? No, Mr. Holmes. No damage at all. All to the safe. Did Cadogan West have access to the plan? On a daily basis, but always supervised. The papers were locked away before he left work on Monday, and he had keys to neither office nor safe. You must drop everything, Sherlock. Never mind your usual petty problems of the police court. <laughs> this is a vital international concern. If you've a fancy to see your name in the next honours list... I play I... the game for the game's sake, which in this instance doesn't seem to be particularly much. Sherlock. Uh, yeah, very well. So I suppose it does present a, a few points of interest. Matter prices. Must withdraw or offer unless contract completed. Speed now essential. All other considerations secondary. Piggle. Excuse me, Colonel. What is it, madam? Sir James is asking for you, sir. Well, of course. Uh, bring me in a brandy, will you? Your brother is in his bedroom, sir. His bedroom? Is that you, Valentine? James, I thought you were feeling stronger today. The police have been here again. You shouldn't let them bother you when you're not up to it. Don't they realize what a shock this has been for you? Their man was most insistent. Oh, it's outrageous. Why did they come back, anyway? Well, surely you've already told them everything you know. No. James? I haven't told them everything. What do you mean? Close the door. Very well. Now come here. I want to talk to you. Sir James Walter is a man who's grown grey in the service of his country. He's a gentleman, a favoured guest in the most exalted houses. Mm, a man whose patriotism is beyond suspicion. Exactly. And he has one of the two sets of keys. To the outer door, the inner door and the safe. The other set's held by the senior clerk, Mr. Sidney Johnson. Forty years old, silent, morose and unpopular. Mm, married. With five children. Oh, indeed. Mm. Now, you've spoken to them both, of course, Lestrade. Oh, yes, Mr. Holmes. At length and more than once. Mm. And? Well, I'll give you a copy of my report, but what it boils down to is they can both account for their movements for the time of the theft. Sir James was in London, Johnson was at home. Uh, uh, I take it these papers are valuable. Cadogan West could have got several thousands for them. Yes, and so presumably could anyone else. Do you have any theories, Lestrade? Oh, I do, sir. In fact, I must say it all seems perfectly straightforward to me. Oh. Mm -hmm. Well, go on. As I see it, young West had false keys. He took the papers to London, where he'd made an appointment with some foreign agent. But they couldn't agree on a price. West started back again, but the agent followed him onto the train, killed him, took the most essential papers, and threw his body out of the carriage. Oh, well, that, that, that's good, Lestrade. Very, very good. Yeah. Your, your theory uh, holds together. Thank you, Mr. Holmes. But if it's true, then the case is over. The traitor's dead, and the plans are presumably already on the continent. <laughs> what is there for me to do? To act, Sherlock. To act. All my instincts are against this explanation. Go to the scene of the crime. See the people concerned. Use your powers. In all your career, you've never had so great a chance of serving your country. <coughs> this is where the body was found. <coughs> <clears throat> exactly here. About three feet to the side of the rails. Uh, he couldn't have fallen from above. The walls are blank. He must have come from a train. About midnight on the Monday, so far as we can trace it. We've got a witness who thinks he heard the body hit the ground. Have the coaches been examined for signs of violence? I checked everything personally, nothing. Where did he get on the train? We don't know, Doctor. You don't know? Well, surely his ticket tells you. There was no ticket on him. No ticket? In my experience, it's not possible to reach a Metropolitan Line platform without exhibiting one's ticket. Perhaps the foreign agent took it. Why should he? Ah, because it would show which station was nearest the agent's house. Excellent, Watson. Mm. What did he have on him, Lestrade? Uh, let's see. Purse containing £2.15, chequebook from the Capital and Counties Bank. Uh, that's how we identified him. 
the uh, papers, of course. And two dress circle tickets for the Woolwich Theatre. When for? That very evening, Doctor, the Monday. Mm, curious. He was taking his fiance. She was the last person to see him alive. Uh, please, Lestrade, she most certainly was not, unless you're suggesting that she murdered him. No, sir, but you know what I mean. Only through long practice. Now, he wasn't carrying any keys. None. Duplicate or otherwise. Uh, that's interesting. He realised that the keys were incriminating and got rid of them. Possibly, possibly, or perhaps, yeah. Mr. Holmes? Points. The points. Hmm. What about them? And a curve, too. Yes, points and a curve. Yes, this case grows in interest. It's unique. Perfectly unique. <laughs> Yet why not? <laughs> why not? Someone's coming. Not before time. What's the matter with them? Yes, gentlemen? Uh, we wish to see Sir James Walter. My card. Sir James, sir. I'm sorry, Mr. Holmes. Sir James died this morning. Monday night, two taps. Payment in hard cash when goods delivered. All caution necessary if danger to be avoided. Peel. He died of a broken heart, gentlemen. Indeed. The appalling scandal. My brother was a man of very sensitive honour. And this business dealt him a crushing blow. We hoped that he might have helped us clear the matter up. No, I assure you, it was as much a mystery to him as it is to you. To all of us. I wonder if his death was natural. I suppose the dishonour could have been too much. Well, uh, all the guilt. Uh, it's hard to believe. Oh, we shouldn't form conclusions before we have all the facts. That's what Scotland Yard is for. <laughs> What's her name again? Westbury. Miss Violet Westbury. I can't explain it, gentlemen. I haven't shut an eye since the tragedy, just thinking what it can mean. Arthur was the most patriotic man on earth. Can you think of any reason why he should have stolen the papers, Miss Westbury? Sir? My fiancé did not steal those plans. But the facts? Yes. I admit I can't explain them. Oh. Uh, was he in need of money? No. His salary was ample. Yes, were there any signs of uh, mental excitement? Now come, Miss Westbury. Be absolutely frank with us. He had been worried about something. To do with his work? Yes. I don't understand. Tell me, Arthur, please. Well, look, you know how valuable some of the drawings in that office are, don't you? Yes, of course. There are people, foreigners, who'd pay a good deal of money just to get a look at them. Well, yes, I suppose there are. They're so slack about security. It would be so easy, Violet, ridiculously easy. He said that. Yes, he did. But only because he couldn't decide what to do about it. Gentlemen, Arthur would have cut off his right hand before he sold a state secret. Anyone who knew him would tell you it's absurd, preposterous. Oh, forgive me. I'm not myself. I, I realise that this is painful for you, Miss Westbury. It is, sir. But even things that seem to tell against him could lead us somewhere. Useful. Thank you, Mr. Holmes. Now, what else happened on that evening? Well, we were going to the theatre, as I said. The weather was awful. Arthur, it's getting thicker. Yes. I don't think I know where we are. Not far now. But where are we? Thomas Street. That's my office on the corner. Arthur? What's the matter? Arthur! Arthur! I waited and waited, but he never came back. How did you get home? I walked. The fog was so thick. I was frightened. You're sure he said nothing more specific 
before he left you? Absolutely sure. And the next day, about 12 o'clock, they came with the news. Oh, Mr. Holmes, if you could only save his honour, it meant so much to him. Uh, come, Watson. Mm. Our ways lie elsewhere. It's bad, Mr. Holmes. Very bad. The chief dead. Cadogan West dead. The papers stolen. The whole place is disorganised. Oh, God, it's dreadful to think of. The Cadogan West should have done such a thing. You're sure of his guilt? Is there any question of it? What time was the office closed on Monday, Mr. Johnson? At five. Did you close it? I'm always the last man out. Mm. Where were the plans? In that safe. Mm. I put them there myself. Ah, yes. May I? Certainly. Yeah. Is there a watchman to the building? An old soldier. A most trustworthy man. He saw nothing. Of course, the fog was very thick, and he has other departments to look after as well. Uh, there are three papers missing, the vital ones. Yes. If someone had those three papers and no others, could they construct a Bruce Partington submarine? I reported to that effect to the Admiralty, but today I'm not so sure of it. I've been over the papers again. And? There's one detail. The double valves with the self-adjusting slots. They're on one of the recovered sheets. These valves are a vital component. Essential. But mm -hmm. a casual examination, the missing three sheets were the only essential ones. The word casual is hardly appropriate. A good deal of technical knowledge would be needed to interpret the plans at all, but... Yes, that is so. Yes, a foreign buyer would be satisfied with them. A deal would be concluded, money would change hands. A large amount of money. I know nothing of such matters. Uh, uh, is this uh, Cadogan West's drawing board? It is. Yeah, that's all. Mm. Who else could identify them? I beg your pardon? The, uh, the three vital sheets. Who else had that knowledge, Mr. Johnson, apart from yourself? Don't try to drag me into this, Mr. Holmes. Please answer the question, Mr. Johnson. Well, Sir James, of course. God rest him. And Cadogan West. <laughs>